good to meet you all. Um, this talk is called The Hacker as an Artist, right? The whole goal here is to um, figure out how people can break into the field of cybersecurity. We're looking at several million unfilled jobs in the next couple of years. Um, and we'll get into some of the issues that, that come up when we talk about cybersecurity careers and cybersecurity as a field. So quick agenda, right? We're going to talk about what is cybersecurity. Um, in order to understand that, we've got to talk about what security is itself. Next portion of that is a career formula for anyone looking to transition or break into cybersecurity as a career field. What, what are some things you can do to kind of enhance your, your appeal um, for employers? Uh, pop quiz. I know we just met, but I have, a couple, I have a couple questions for you. So you're going to see screens with blanks on them. Um, shout out the answer if you have it or if you think you know it. So blank is the number of new malware files created daily. Thousand. Thousand. Okay. Anyone else? Five million. Five million. Okay. Higher, lower? 100,000. 100,000, okay. Going once, going twice. The answer is 230,000. You're all, you're all kind of close. You're all kind of, I guess. Uh, that, that number comes from Kaspersky Labs. They're a security company, and they do a lot of research in the field as well. A cyber attack takes place approximately every blank seconds. 10 seconds. 80 seconds. Two seconds? Two seconds. It's not that bleak yet. We're getting there, though. Uh, 39 seconds, right? Um, next question is, blank is the dollar amount expected to be spent, the, sorry, the, and this number comes to us from James Clark School of Engineering out of the University of Maryland. They're, they have a big cybersecurity presence. Um, blank is the number of dollars ex expected to be spent globally on cybersecurity between 2017 and 2020. 40 billion. 200. 200 what? Dollars? Billion. OK. Anyone else? Five million. All right. Five billion with a B. All right, the answer is one trillion dollars, right? And that includes all sorts of spending in cybersecurity, um, whatever you can think of that, that relates to cyber and has to do with products and cyber or um, services, uh, all of that combined. And that number comes to us from Cybersecurity Ventures, which is a cyber research firm. And this is, I think this is the last question, I'm not sure. Uh, blank was recently hacked. Facebook? Facebook. Every, everyone? PlayStation. Pentagon. PlayStation, someone said. You're all correct. All of those companies and many more have been hacked um, in the last few months, if not days. Uh, oh, I lied, there's another question. The global shortage of, of uh, oh, sorry, there's a global shortage of blank number of security professionals by 2019. Cyber. Well, I mean, sorry, we're looking for a number there. Oh. Maybe that's not clearly written. 700,000. It's very specific. 700,000. Anything else? 3.5 um, million cybersecurity professionals by 2021. Presently, women make up only 11% of the field, and minorities make up 12%. And 3.5 million number comes to us from Cybersecurity Ventures, again, that research firm in cyber. Um, average salary for a security practitioner, someone who works in the industry? Between, are you give me a range? Yes. All right, that's correct, right? So 116, from the Bureau, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is a number that we've come up with, right? Uh, $116,000, uh, that's sort of the average, right? If you're working in the industry, it's not the highest, not the lowest. Um, I've seen salaries four or five times that, and salaries maybe a fourth of that as well. Uh, so what is cybersecurity? Any thoughts? So the way I explain cybersecurity is by thinking about security first. How do we protect our homes or physical data that's important to us? Uh, maybe you have a vault, maybe you have a security camera, a fence, lock and key, right? Uh, know who has your keys, don't hand them out, right? It's not, um, uh, and all these things have digital equivalents. That's the whole idea in cybersecurity, right? You're taking concepts from physical security and applying them to the digital world, like you said. Um, cybersecurity is sort of a buzzword. It's a marketing term, right? The industry is really called InfoSec or information security because that's what we're protecting, right? We're not protecting cyber, we're protecting information. Um, uh, marketers and, and Business development folks really ran with this term cybersecurity, uh, sort of like they have with the word hacker, right? Um, uh, if you want to sound cool and act like you know what you're talking about, call it InfoSec. Uh, so this is the official definition, or one of the definitions I found that I like, and it's from Wikipedia. It says, cybersecurity is technologies, processes, and practices designed to protect networks, devices, programs, and data from attack, damage, or unauthorized access, right? So all the things you guys are saying, right? Um, protecting your email, digital assets, uh, all of that, all of that is kind of encompassed in this definition. Uh, it says attack, damage, or unauthorized access, um, and we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about that in the next slide. So the entire industry is built on three concepts. Uh, it's called the CIA triad: confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Right? 
all pretty straightforward. Confidentiality means only people who should have access have access to something. Uh, integrity means that it's unchanging, right? When someone has integrity, they're, they're, they're said to be kind of, um, uh, they're solid in their resolve. They are who they are. They don't change. They're not very bendable. Uh, availability means when we need access to a resource, we have that access, all right? So people who are authorized and properly authenticated can access resources, whether that's files or networks or data of any kind. Bunch of different job titles in security, right? These are a couple that I pulled off um, from job boards recently, but this is, uh, all these roles are, are, are all aligned with that slide that we saw before about protecting data, right? But they all address that in different aspects or different capacities. Um, so here's the issue with a lot of fields, right? Especially early when you're a student, you're trying to break into a field. You need the experience to get the job, but you need the job to get the experience, and then the vicious cycle kind of perpetuates and no one gets a job, right? Uh, all is not lost. There, there, are some, there are some things that you can do to protect yourself or, or kind of uh, break out of that cycle, right? So the first step is learning. Um, I want to say one thing. With a lot of these, a lot of the things mentioned here apply to other industries also. It's not just cyber. Um, this is obviously tailored for security, for a career in security, but a lot of things can apply to, uh, I would say, generally any career in tech or even some other industries as well. So, and learning can mean take a variety of forms in 21st century, 2018, right? You can go to boot camp, you can go to traditional college, you can go to a private career training school. Um, there, there are schools that are developing degrees in cybersecurity, so that's still happening. Uh, online labs and activities, right? There's op online open courseware. Anybody familiar with that? MOOC? We've heard that term before, right? Um, you type in a subject, you find a course from an Ivy League or any sort of renowned college that is, that's offering that course online, oftentimes at no cost. Uh, Sometimes there's a, there's a nominal fee that you would pay to get verified, and they'll give you a certificate saying you completed the course. Hack this site, hack the box. These are a couple of sites where you can actually test out and learn um, security skills, right? The idea is that cybersecurity is a field that's very attack defense, right? It's very, uh, not, I'm not gonna say clear cut, but it does have an, an offensive and a defensive uh, nature to it, right? For that reason, competitions are very popular in cybersecurity, right? Uh, something called capture the flag competitions, right? So you'd have What's, what's traditionally known as a red team and a blue team kind of attacking or kind of going after assets, right? And you're finding files or servers and you're trying to enter them or, or guard them uh, based on what team you're in. These are a couple of sites that, uh, that have online competitions in cybersecurity. The way these work is you compete online in the comfort of your own home. Sometimes if you qualify as a finalist, you, you fly out to a physical location and compete in person. Uh, you can think of these as hackathons, but very specialized in cybersecurity purely. So once you've learned stuff, you can go ahead and break things, right? So there's, there's a huge, uh, huge industry in cyber chasing bug bounties, right? Bug bounties are, are vulnerabilities or exploits, right? Or weaknesses in systems that companies will say, hey, if you can find something uh, that's wrong with our website or something that's wrong with our system, we'll pay you for it. If you disclose it to us instead of like selling it on the black market or the deep web, right? Like people like zero day virus. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right, so finding this and so finding one of those and then saying, hey, I found this. Um, the government will give you a letter that says thank you for your service and no money sometimes, whereas private companies will, will reward you based on, based on how critical the disclosure is, right? Um, uh, and there's a couple of different platforms that have popped up, right? Some companies run it independently where you can reach out to them and say, hey, I found this thing. Um, I, didn't, I didn't exploit it. I'm just telling you about it. Here you go. You can fix it now. Uh, but there's also a couple of platforms, Bug Crowd, Hacker One, that are popping up and saying, hey, companies can register with us. And then as a security professional or a researcher, you can also register and we'll, we'll connect you with whatever seems interesting to you, whatever's in line with your skill set. Obligatory legal disclosure when we talk about cyber, right? Unauthorized use of a computer carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison and fines. Don't touch things that don't belong to you. Engage with the community, right? We're in New York City. There's a cybersecurity event almost every single day, right? Uh, and if you go to them, you will see me there because I go to all of them. I try to go to all of them. Um, there's Meetup, Eventbrite, conferences, conventions. Uh, if you type in cybersecurity or information security, you'll find a bunch of things. Eventbrite, how did you guys find about this? Um, uh, Meetup. Up. Meet okay, Meetup, someone said Eventbrite. Right, so those, they have a lot of security things on there as well. And generally, for the most part, the security community is pretty welcoming, right? If, you, if you're willing to, if you want to learn something, we'll take, they'll take you in. Um, and then you have online communities as well, Reddit, um, Stack Exchange, Wired. All of these have different sort of forums and communities where you can kind of engage with other professionals or other people looking to learn. Um, and they're professional organizations. If you're a student, you can join a trade association in cybersecurity um, and then can be connected with job openings, uh, mentorship, training resources, 
a couple of big ones are OWASP, uh, ISSA, ICMP, and the National Cybersecurity Students Association. Uh, at the end here is kind of share your knowledge, right? Share what you learn. There's always going to be someone who's not at your level. So if you're learning and you have a style of, of kind of explaining things, um, whatever your preferred social media outlet is, right? Go ahead and try and share what you're learning. And that's kind of how communities grow, right? With everyone sharing what they know and dispersing knowledge. Um, and, and you don't have to be an expert initially, right? The, that kind of comes with, with the practice, with the hands-on, kind of talking about it, learning about it, all of that kind of comes with it if you're actually digging deep into this industry. Uh, reverse engineer the job description. Uh, when you're searching for jobs, right, LinkedIn, Indeed. So if you're looking for jobs in cyber, keywords are cybersecurity, cyber, uh, security, information security, infosec, analyst, SOC. Um, you want to look at what skills they're asking for. Sometimes they'll say Linux or networking. Um, and then one other thing they do is they'll list specific tools that they want you to be familiar with, right? If you look at those tools, and then you go to the site where the tool is available, or the company that makes it, oftentimes there's a free trial or a free, free download, right? You can play around with the tool a little bit, get, get, get some hands-on experience with it, um, and then you know, kind of say, hey, I, I'm familiar with this tool. I've used this before. I know what I'm doing. Um, they've got the free trial versions, and, so, and yeah, that's that last bullet there, right? Uh, familiarizing yourself with the software, and uh, so you have maybe not professional experience, but you're, you're, it's not completely strange or foreign to you when you start. Uh, quick recap, right? Learn, break stuff, um, avoid jail, get job, right? Pretty kind of straightforward of a career path. Uh, not a lot of places have that, right? It's a very meritocratic industry in the sense that we don't care where you went to school, we don't care about your search necessarily. HR does, we don't. Um, if you can do the job that we're hiring for, come on down, right? That's, that's the entire industry in a nutshell. Um, security hygiene is important. Whether you work in the industry or not, we're all connecting online. We all have phones in our hands, right? We all use technology. Security hygiene, knowing what not to do, what to do, right? I'm not going to uh, lecture you on making stronger passwords, right? But make stronger passwords. Um, there's no correct path into this industry. The formal is universally applicable, right? There are organizations, uh, trade organizations or industry organizations in every career field. Uh, hack isn't a bad word, right? We think about hackers being criminals. Those are two distinctly different classes of people, right? Hackers are just curious. They're kind of looking at how things work, what else they can do. Uh, the media, again, has kind of ran with that, right? When in doubt, blame the media. Uh, the media's kind of ran with hacker as a negative, uh, as a substitute or a synonym for criminal. Not the case. Uh, you guys can be kind of the pioneers that stop that. Uh, happy hacking. Thanks for listening.